Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to more Factorio modded mini mega base real world, not 15 goodness. Yeah. So last time we left out, we had gotten blue research up and running, I believe. Let's take a quick peek at that just to, to see it in its glory. I haven't played in, um, you know, half a week or so. Oh, yeah, there's our blue research. Looks like we got 12 factories producing the good stuff. Oh, excuse me. And we finished... Uh, Advanced oil processing, if I'm not mistaken. Which means we now have the ability to put out some advanced oil processing. In which case, we're going to have to relay the way our pipes here work so that we get uh, a little bit of priority going to lubricant and uh, flamethrower fuel for now and get the rest of it getting cracked. So let's uh, just go ahead and switch over production right now. And we have our pipes in the wrong inputs. Crap skis. I knew that was going to be an issue. <laughs> Okie dokely. Well, um, uh, let's 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 do this, <laughs> shall we? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. And also, while we're at it, let's just yank these flare stacks out right now, and the stuff that was feeding them there. I don't want to flare anything off. We're not actually producing anything right now, so I don't want it to just disappear. Although we have uh, we we have disappeared all of the heavy oil, we're pretty full up on lubricant. We're going to need it for electric engines and blue belts right away. We are going to go pretty hardcore into those uh, blue belts, I think. Okay, that's taken care of now, which means we could very easily do the exact same thing we had here by um, just you know like doing something like this, and then something like this, and then like this. And then we have the exact same setup that we just gave up on a moment ago and ripped apart, except actually connecting into the oil input on all of these instead of into nothing. And you know what, let's run these. I don't want to connect the oil in yet, but let's at least run this stuff on the back of the refineries. If I connect this, it's going to connect oil, so we're going to leave that plain for now. Then how do we do the water, you may ask? Well, the most natural way to do the water here would be to do something like this. We just put two things out and then we... Like, we could backplane it by just going under into a backplane over here, but the sort of most natural way of doing this would just be to uh, connect something along these lines and then merge up all these water connections to each other. And Bob's your auntie essentially. There you go. So this will connect water in. We need to actually run water into this at some place and I think that should be up here because then we can run water down to get it into the crackers if we do it up here as well. Into the crackers. Oh yeah. So we've got our water pump. Have I uh, placed one of these water pumps yet? I, I hope I have. They're pretty awesome. I do, I do like these water pumps quite a bit. I think this position is fine. If we put it in this position and we put a pipe here we put a pipe there and emerge into there, that means that we can actually go... No, okay, never mind. Never you mind. We're going to need it a little bit further up than that, aren't we? Um, yeah, so that is literally right next to that. So we're going to have to place it there then if I'm thinking right. Right? No, that's one too far up again. God damn it, Liz, you atrocious, terrible person. You... Get your shit together, please. There we go. And then we will have to run it into there like that. And that means we can run like water underneath here and up to this direction so that we can get water connected to the crackers as well. And that should take care of that. Also, we are going to need power and uh, light over here so we can see the water production. Excelente. Good. We got water coming in. We've got the oil ready to feed. So advanced oil processing is mostly up and running. We just need to connect this to get it processing. It's going to die out right the fuck away because we are we're actually out of petroleum. So we're going to, yeah, see the plastic just stopped. You can actually see it barely working at all. Let's connect this. This is mostly going to produce petroleum and a little bit of light and heavy, which we should be able to burn off with this stuff. So it should pretty much hardcore make plastic. Oh, sneeze coming on. Yeah! Way to catch those sneezes and cut the recording in time. Ha ha ha, yeah, fuckers. 
So we are actually depleting our petroleum in here, it looks like. Oh, because we're not producing, because what are we full on? We're full on light oil. Because we're empty on heavy. Yeah, because we're empty on heavy, so we're not making any of this because we pulled all the heavy for lubricant and that. So yeah, this is going to run out, and we are now, we can't do anything because light oil is too big in the system. That's okay, we're going to take care of that issue right now. And by right now, and how we are going to take care of that issue, I mean we are going to... Can I do that? Can it go here? Um, I don't think it should go there, I think it should go here. Uh, and then we are going to make you, what, uh, heavy to light cracking? Perhaps that might work out in our favor. And then we could put light cracking like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right there. Is this going to work? Are we too close? Are we too far? Are we in a good position? I need to be able to get water into all this. I might need to reposition this stuff a little bit. But uh, let's, let's take a peek. So. We could get light oil up into here pretty easily from here, and then we can run it to the sides. Getting water in is going to be a bit more of an issue without at least one more tile further away, right? I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're probably going to need one more tile out to make that work. Uh, do I have construction robots? Like, did I finish construction robotics? I must have. I have flight, which leads to logistics robots and combat robots and construction robots. Yes, we did. So we have the ability to build roboports and chests and construction robots at this point. So we should make sure that's a priority. Like, we're, we're working on something else right now, and I get that. Let's work on the thing that we're working on. But we should make that a priority. Combat shoddy. Oh, yeah. Boom, boom. No, we're going to go mining productivity. High priority that we get this done. So... We can connect this easy enough. The water would be fine. I mean, I could connect the water, but then I have to be able to connect this without using any kind of bridging because the water is connecting in that way. I think this stuff is too close. We're going to back this away a little bit more so that we can get a water plane running behind these things, and uh, we won't be in a bad position due to that. So let's just put it like here. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these good guys. So that's going to be heavy, and then we're going to do light. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very good. And we're going to go ahead and direct connect you into here. Do I want to direct connect you into here like this, though? I think I only want you to run if we have more than 80% in the system. So I think rather than literally just direct connecting you into there, what we're going to do is take an overflow valve so it will only run if we have more than 80 percent in the system and then we are going to connect you into there so now it will automatically because of this valve prioritize making lubricant and um, the heavy oil for flamethrower fuel because it's only going to run heavy oil cracking if we have over 80 percent so it'll run these things when these things stop running the heavy oil will build up in the lines and then when the heavy oil builds up to 80 percent it's going to start cracking it and all will be well in the world at that point now you can connect right down into here so let's do that you are going to be our merge point into there and then we are going to merge point these guys like so. And we're actually producing again because that technically opened up a little bit of room for light oil. And then I need, uh, well, we might as well uh, seal these all off right now. And then I'm going to need water, which uh, you should be well familiar with how we get water in here. So we can actually do a merge point onto this with water, but do we want to do that? I don't think we do. Are we going to screw anything up if we pipe water back to anywhere? I don't think that's going to screw anything up on this. So let's pipe water back to, is it going to interfere with this one? No, it's not going to interfere with that one. Yeah, everything should be fine running water like that. So then we're going to get water in here by bridging it from here. Oh, check that shit out, bro. Actually, we can run it into here, and then we have to go under that. That that doesn't that doesn't bode well, does it? No, no, not well at all. Okay, so our water thing is a bit of a fuck up again. You know, just just thank Uncle Bumblefuck. That's that's the way this thing works. And let's go down here. I shouldn't say that. That's a that's a Canadian term, um, by the way, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, but there is a uh, 
Canadian like um, sort of engineering and workshopping kind of YouTuber person who uh, uses that term, which is a common Canadian term, and um, is fairly uh, well known for it. So uh, in respect to his sort of trademarking of a common term uh, and making it his own, I should uh, probably not call myself that. Uh, that would be rather inappropriate, I think. So yeah, we're, we're going to avoid using the Uncle Bumblefuck phrase, but other common terms uh, we will continue to uh, spout at our leisure, essentially. I'm going to grab 100 of these 150 poles. I don't need all of them. The reason I don't need all of them is because I know my inventory is getting a little bit full at the moment, and I don't want it to overload right now. And uh, we're going to power this shit up. We're going to put a pole in every um, chemical plant. We're going to put lights in the front of all of them. And now we need to merge these poles with those poles. And we can do it right here, I think. Yeah, we can do it right there. Uh, so you're getting heavy oil and water. You're getting light oil and water. And you're distributing everything to there. So yes, we're good to go. You're not going to get to output, neither are you for the time being. We need to output these somewhere. I guess you're just going to output back into this tank because that would make sense. And in order to facilitate that, I think we're just going to run a uh, plane of pipes across here like so. And then you're going to run underground and uh, up into there like that. Done. That's going to get the petroleum flowing, fill in this tank. It gets it good. And now you need to get your crap out and you need to feed it up into the light oil, which, I mean, the easiest way to do so would be to send it this way and then down and into that, which, you know, I guess I could do. Can I make that work? Without removing this light, preferably, I guess I gotta remove that light if I wanna do that. So the idea of what I wanna do here is just run it underneath our electric pole, and then if I do this, no, it's gonna join with this. I don't want to use flow control to make this happen, so that's not going to work without making this one thing further out, unless I can get this water line directly plumbed into here without using this, which is a possibility. Can I do that realistically speaking though? Yeah, I can do it for this one. No, I can't, because I still have to have this line here to merge it in from this direction. I have to have something behind it in order to do that. And uh, this, uh, okay, then no, nope, no, nope, we're not connecting there like that. I can connect up into here. Where else can I connect this into? What if I came around this way and came? No, that would uh, that would be a little silly. What I could do here is this, and then you can just do a merge line like that. And then you, which are already running under, can merge into there like that. And now you're pumping your crap out. Uh, you'll get heavy oil when heavy gets over 80%, but it is currently not anywhere near getting over 80%, so we're not going to crack heavy. We are cracking light, making petroleum, filling that shit up, and uh, all is well in the world. And our refineries are producing at full tilt. And we're making lots of this stuff. We're ha we have enough heavy in the system to make this and uh, this. So the other thing we need to do is light oil. We need to prevent light oil from entering this system unless light oil is over 80% as well. So in order to achieve that, what we're going to do is actually put an overflow valve right here. And uh, we'll put your underground pipe there again. So now it will only send light oil into this system, into the cracking system, if it happens to be over 80% capacity as well. So if we get below 80% capacity, it's going to stop sending light, just like it did there. Cracking is going to stop happening, and then the only thing that will use light will be this chemical plant. But the chemical plant is done creating its crap, so we're good to go. Awesome sauce! Nice. Okay, advanced oil processing is up and running, and we're only like 10 to 15 minutes into the video, excuse me. Um, I'm probably going to want to expand this very soon. Probably want to expand this. Probably want to take six more belt or two more belts out of this, especially since I'm bleeding off two belts uh, already. So that's going to require redesigning a few things. It does take up a little bit more like footprint 
than I'm used to, but I really like this sort of, you know, dual belt feeding in with uh, splitters and fast inserters and whatnot assembly line style. Just creates nice square blocks of stuff, and then you can ship the materials out wherever they need to go. And I'm so used to creating the materials you need for science on site. It just looks so weird having just the science factories here with just materials piped into them. It looks so neat and tidy. It's ridiculous. Anyway, next step is some more uh, oil type manufacturing because we need to expand very soon. Yeah, we're getting really low on a few of these patches. I mean, we have other patches nearby, but uh, I want to exploit them in a little bit of a different way. So we are getting very low on some of our nearby patches. Um, I think we should probably work on getting uh, batteries so that we can get lasers going and with lasers and batteries and all that good stuff we can really effectively uh, expand. Oh my god look how much of this is mined out. This is the iron that feeds steel. Yeah we're not making much, uh, <laughs> we are definitely not making much steel. Look how few of the furnaces are running. You can see with bottleneck the green lights are the ones that are running and all of these not running. So we need to feed that much, much harder. That's what the train stations are going to be for in the end. But for now, next step is going to be sulfuric acid. And sulfuric acid, we've got a nice uh, pipe of um, petroleum right here. So that's going to be good. Uh, so sulfuric acid, we're going to want how many plants for? We're going to want one, two, three. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plants total, I think. For sulfuric acid, I'm not 100% on that, but how how is this got to go? It's got to go something like, uh, what if we do something like that and that? Can I make this? I, I'm pretty sure last time we did this, I had to uh, play with this a little bit to actually make it work. I don't think this is going to work here because why? Why is this not going to work? Because a sulfuric acid actually needs to have water input into it, right? I can make the water input though. There's nothing stopping me from getting water into this. There's no liquid input going into there, so I don't know why that would be a problem. Water input into this is fine. Petroleum input into that is fine. I should be able to make that work, shouldn't I? Like if I put inserters, uh, you have to go there and you have to go there, you have to go there and you have to go there. So the water input has to come in here and here, which means it has to come from behind. Either that or I have to bring it in from individual sides. I can't bridge it over from one side. But that's fine. It Coming in from behind is fine for this because it has to feed these guys anyway. So water from behind in this situation is perfectly fine. I don't see any problem with that. And then you guys feed like that. And uh, then basically all I need to do is you need to run water. Uh, okay, that might be a slight problem though. Yeah, we might be just a little bit, like a little smidgy digin too close to here. So let's just see the situation before we actually determine whether or not that is the case. Uh, you're just going to have a regular pipe, I guess. Um, and then it's a matter of do we want to use undergrounds to do this? We probably do, even though it seems a little silly but we probably do want to underground stuff like that and then you just have to merge together and you just have to merge together like so. And then we probably want to run one more underground over here. Is that everything fed? No, you're not being fed. Why Why do I have a... That's an underground pipe. Yeah, that's a pipe of ground, okay. And you're not being fed. Oh my goodness, I totally just boned that entirely. How, how did I do that so stupid? Okay, so what we need to do to accomplish this, we need a pipe to ground. It's going to have to come up like this. We need a pipe to ground. It's going to have to come up like this. We're going to need a pipe to ground that comes up like this, and we're going to need a pipe to ground that comes up like this. Additionally to that, I need those guys like so. So I might as well just backplane this. That's going to get me water. Now I need to get petroleum in. So yeah, realistically speaking, I need one more tile down for this. So uh, I'll be back. I'm going to reposition all of this stuff uh, another tile or two downwards. I'll see you in a second. All right, so we're back. And we've got our setup uh, complete here. We're just going to backplane this, although we ran out 
that's okay. We're just going to hand bomb a few of these because I only need a couple pipes to finish this off. And uh, we're going to power this whole system up, which is going to be a little irritating. Actually, do I want you there? I kind of do want you there, even though that's where the inserter needs to go. Uh, we'll, we'll figure out something to make that situation work. Um, yeah, and uh, why don't we just do like that? There we go. We'll, we'll star the power. Very good. Lights, we have 38. Let's throw them in like so. And also, I can't put... Oh, there's an underground there. Right, 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 right. Let's throw a couple in over here too, just to make the situation good. So now we need to connect our water line in, and we need to connect our petrol line in. The petrol should be easy enough considering it's right there. The water should be easy enough considering I have it right here. And that to there and boom, done. That should make us our sulfur and sulfuric acid. Uh, and in order to feed this crap, we're going to need those and those like so. And then we need iron, and then we are good to go on this. Well, iron shouldn't be a problem. We have iron coming out, and it just comes up through here. So we should be able to branch off a little bit of iron, no problemo, and uh, run it up into here. Although I suppose I should store this, shouldn't I? Should I just bottle it? Should I store it in tank form, or should I bottle it in barrel form? I would prefer to bottle it in barrel form. Um, I've been experimenting with like storing this crap in tanks lately though, so let's let's you know store it in a tank and see how that that works for us. And uh, there you go. So that will secure our sulfuric acid, which we'll use to make batteries and various other things as well, and all should be good in the universe. But we need to get iron up there first before we can call this a win. And how are we going to accomplish that? Well, the best way is probably literally just splitting off some iron and then re-merging it again and running it up. So if I'm going to split off some more iron, I would like to do it here and we'll just run it up right through this area, right next to this electric pole. And all should be well in the world. And in order to do that, we're going to want to run it uh, something like that, I suppose. And also something like that, I suppose. And uh, our split will happen here. And right there, congratulations, there you go. And there we are. And let's not actually connect this yet, let's just run it up first. I might need to reposition this if I want to move this over a bit in order to make more gears or whatever I want to do with that. I haven't decided for certain yet, uh, but someday we will. And when we have, we'll like just make it make it work the way we need it to work, basically. Uh, so this, honestly, I'm thinking all we really need to do here is just straight inserter and we can underground this uh, something like that and up into there and we're just going to connect right in. This makes sense. I think this makes sense and if this doesn't make sense to you, well then whatever. You do what you want in your world, I'm doing what I want in my world because once again, this is Factorio. This is our own world, and we can all do whatever the hell we want to do in it, because, yeah. Yellow underground is cheaper than red underground. That's the only reason we're doing that. And uh, one more. One more little belt here will finish this off. Done. So that should get us sulfuric acid pumping in. And then it's time for batteries. Oh, it's a problemo, though. Oh, the problemo though. You know what I should do? I should run copper up on this line as well because batteries need copper and iron. Yeah, you know what? Um, hold for a second. We're going to run copper up on this line as well and we are actually going to... We're going we're gonna to reposition this line a little bit. We're going to put it here. I know we're running a red line of this stuff up for no good reason. We're mostly doing it because there was a, uh, a red line that we're splitting off of. But in all honesty, this doesn't actually need to be red. We can make this yellow. We can save some of these red belts. But yeah, we are going to cheat just a little bit. Good. Replaces both of them at the same time. Also, oh no, I can pick that up. That's perfectly fine. What we're going to do here is we're going to merge in some... Uh, copper as well 
this doesn't need to be red, whatever. I don't care right now. It's it's not that big of a deal to me at the moment. We're going to run you up and we're going to merge you in like so and you in like so and then you're going to become yellow belt and like come up here and merge in with that one and all will be well in the world. Let's not actually physically connect them yet though because I want to make sure this is uh, this is all connected properly before we do that. Uh, I do need to run another underground with you so we're going to do that. And I'm going to need some more underground belts. It looks like more of the yellow kind. So let's go grab some of them. Let's just grab 100. Because you never know. I might need crap tons of them faster than you can imagine. Let's convert that. Let's convert that. Let's. Uh, I'm going to keep this as a red splitter for now. Just because you know we can. But Because it, it, it's part of a red line. We're going to call it a red splitter. But this one we're going to just make a, a yellow belt. So it's going to like it's gonna cause it to bottleneck, which is fine by me. And now we're gonna split this guy like so and re-merge them like so. Done, there's our copper, there's our iron. Let's merge this belt together. We're gonna get a mixed copper iron belt coming in. And in order to facilitate this, all I really need to do is scoop the iron that's on the wrong side. Which we don't even need to do because these guys are basically consuming it all anyway. Alright, there we go. Sulfuric acid is pretty much done for now. We have this maxed out, so that's good. We could store some sulfur if we want to. Um, when the sulfuric acid isn't producing, we, we do have more than enough sulfur production here to like build up a supply. So we could store some for some explosives or whatever. But this is correct ratio, so we're not going to build up that much of a supply. And here we go. Okay, good. Batteries then. Batteries are pretty simple. All we really need for them is the iron, the copper, and the sulfuric acid. And we happen to have the iron and the copper right here, and the sulfuric acid right here. So literally everything that we need for batteries is here. Like, this is, this is about as simple as it gets, guys. Like, I, I can't stress that this is about as simple as it gets. If we do take a connection off of this, it actually bypasses all of the storage tank, which would be a little bit silly. Oh, uh, you know what? Are we about to just wipe all of the stuff in the storage tank because I'm going to move it to somewhere else? That would seem colossally silly. Alternatively, I can move this inserter over to here and we can underground belt that. That's the better way of doing it. Or not underground belt, but you know what I mean. This way we are actually taking from the same line that has uh, the stuff in it. Okay, so we're going to come out this way. And let's make a couple battery production plants. So chemical plants for batteries. You know what? I have three chemical plants. Let's make four. So let's make one more. Oh, I have all the materials I need. Excellent. I love when that happens. Uh, four chemical plants. Let's make ourselves some batteries, shall we? And in order to accomplish that, why don't we, let, let's give us a little bit of space over here and, um, I don't know. We could literally just do something like that. I don't see any reason why this is going to be a problem if we do something like that. We can merge them both into one line. It looks a little bit more messy for my taste. It's not the way I usually like to do stuff, but uh, it should be, you know, simple at the very least. And it's just going to take directly off of this line instead of getting its own materials, which seems a little silly, but whatever. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to have these merge together into one line. I do like to uh, make an entire belt of batteries, even though this is actually going to produce the sufficient numbers for it. But I do want to sideload these all onto one belt, and all should be good there. What's the battery time? Five seconds. Yeah, so the thing is... We definitely don't need anything faster than a yellow inserter on these guys. And their material inputs don't need anything faster than a yellow inserter. So that should take care of that situation. Am I going to be able to? No, I'm not going to be able to. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me reevaluate the way I need to run the material into this stuff. Okay, so you need to connect in, and you're actually not close enough right now. So if I were to move you over, let's say, to right here, is that going to be in a good enough position to make this work? I'll just rebuild the belt array and all that stuff there. If this is going to work the way I want it to, 
This simplistic just put it on this line thing might not be sufficient. I might want to actually make something a little bit more complicated for this, but uh, I, I just wanted to check and see if this is going to do what I want it to do or if I have to actually build like a proper battery production setup here in order to uh, satisfy my need for this not to look like ass. And to achieve this, we're just going to do that. And you're going to get your sulfuric acid coming in just fine. That'll be battery production. Um, and then you're going to get your materials just fine in those positions, which should work out OK. Can you now? Yeah, you can now electric pull there. You can't electric pull here, so we still need to have a bridge between you. Um, lights. I'm carrying science packs on me. Why am I carrying science packs? 14 of those kinds as well. That's how long have I been doing that for? He 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 he. Uh, yeah. See, alternatively, instead of doing it like that, what I could do is just go sideways and sideload onto it, right? Yeah, you know what, let's just do this. And then we are going to do this, except that you guys are just going to pull down here and side load up into there, which is going to go like that, and done. All right, now unload batteries straight on out. And that's going to create a, a belt on both sides of batteries. And we're done with that. And this is like basically where we left batteries off last time we played. We, we made them, and then we didn't do anything with them, <laughs> basically. But no, we are going to use these batteries for something. We are going to need to make ourselves some laser turrets, which I have access to. Yes, yes, I totally do. 20 steel, 20 circuits, and 12 batteries in 20 seconds per laser turret. So I have steel. Circuits are over here. Batteries are over here. Batteries are used for various other things as well, in particular things like accumulators. Yay, nice. We have one more level here with this side, so let's do that. So I could bust the batteries. If I bust the batteries, where do they fit? This bus is occupied, this bus is occupied, this bus technically is not occupied, but it is because it's four copper. This one is occupied, so I really don't have space on this uh, four quad bus setup that we did to bring batteries in right now. Uh, at least from this direction, I would normally want to merge them like part way and we could do that. We can just move them behind and then merge them in part way and then go. That's a possibility. Like after the coal is finished, we can merge them in over here. Then we would have steel. We would have these circuits. What do the accumulators need? They need just iron. So those are easy to produce as well. And then we can run those to wherever we want to run them, which would probably be down into here, into a factory section or something. So that's a possibility. Um, I have steel and I have circuits over here. We don't need these to be in any special positions. So we could actually put them here. And I have steel and I have electric circuits here. And then all I need is batteries. And if I have batteries, which I can run like, for example, down this center line right here. Ooh, that's a possibility, isn't it? Oh, I never put stone into this automatically, did I? No, I didn't. I know I was considering doing that, but I mean, I filled up the chest. So, like, what? what's the big deal? But yeah, I could run the batteries down this inner line and then just merge right into it. And then we could just make lasers right here. I don't think that's a bad idea because I don't need them in a... Like, uh, this. this is all I need them for, my own personal use right now. Um, I don't need them for any other things at the moment. So if I was to do that, how would I make that work? I would probably put uh, something like this guy here and uh, then just a line do 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 under. Then it can run over here on the furthest down section of the bus, which I did have room set aside for and up and yep that's what we're gonna do okay so I'm going to plumb some batteries over here and uh, we're gonna set this factory up but we're gonna do that in the next video because this has been a uh, full episode so far believe it or not thank you for tuning in and I'll see you again next time once we have lasers up and running we're gonna start building outposts to expand and then trains finally it's the real world and we're finally gonna have trains oh my goodness anyway thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.